So this is uh, in depth on the Bluetti Hub D1. This is the much awaited high output uh, 12 volt accessory for the, uh, for the Apex. And it turns out for uh, pretty much anything that will take this uh, P090D battery connector. So the, uh, what you get in the box is the hub itself with a handle clip attached to it. And you get an Anderson uh, SB50 uh, shell. This is just the shell. There are no, no wires. It's not a completed pigtail. You don't even get the inserts for it. So I'm not sure what the point of that is, but you know, it'll, you'll try to put it here, but it won't go in because the inserts aren't there. Uh, most people who are aware of the uh, Anderson connectors will probably have something like this already on their setup. Uh, this is uh, 50 amp capable and it will connect right in there. And then you can run that to your, your house wiring and your camper van, wherever you might need to, to go. So th this does not come with it. This is, this is mine. So the, uh, the Hub D1, up close here, it has two uh, cigarette lighter style uh, 12, 12 volt outlets, two DC 5521s. Over here you have two uh, USB-A ports. And over here you have two type C 100 watt ports. There's also an on off manual button here and it does light up uh, colors. It'll turn green when it is turned on and you have 12 volts selected or blue if it, you set it to 24 volts. Uh, the 24 volts impacts the uh, Anderson connector, the uh, lighter sockets and the uh, DC 5521s. So that is very interesting. Also, I found out it has an internal fan. This thing is actively cooled. It will run the fan when it needs to. Uh, that's sweet. So I have uh, the Apex here turned on. We will uh, connect this to the Apex. Hit the on button, it is lit up green. So if we go in the apex, we can see that it uh, turned the gray for the uh, DC output uh, turned uh, amber and it turned on because I hit the button to turn it on. So if we select that DC output, now we can see uh, various meterings on there, uh, cigarette lighter, zero watts, zero watts, zero watts, but it shows voltage for everything. It shows uh, the Anderson. That is neat. Uh, so the, the lighter plug and the 5521s are metered for each side. Uh, the, the type C's are metered and the uh, regular USB A's are metered as well as the Anderson connector is metered. So one, two, three, five, six different things are metered in here. That is, uh, that's, that's a lot of data. So uh, let me back out of that just for fun. So now we can, we also have DC switching for it in the Apex menu. Let me go to advanced settings in the Apex. So now under Eco, we do have DC Eco also. Uh, without the hub plugged in, you only see AC Eco mode. If I go into advanced settings, I can see the DC output voltage here is 12 volts. Uh, in here you can select and change it to 24 volts uh, from the apex itself. So this is all neat and dandy. Let me uh, turn it off and we will connect it to the B300. What do you think is going to happen when I connect it to the B300? Look, it turns on. I have the I have the B300 turned on, of course, but it turns on. Now, how do we talk to it? Uh, it turns out this guy has its own Bluetooth built in. When you when you plug it into the Apex, it disables the internal Bluetooth and hangs off of the uh, UI for the Apex itself. But when it's uh, running with anything else, it activates its Bluetooth and it is its own device in the app. So I can go to Hub D1 here. 
and there it is in the app. Uh, it's got uh, some settings. You can do firmware, you can do uh, in advanced, you can set the, the output voltage to 12 or 24 volts. Let me turn it off. It wants you to do the pro mode password. Okay, now we're in pro mode and it switched it to 24 volts. If I press the button here, it should light up blue. And it does. I don't know if we can see that on camera, but it is now blue. We will set it back to 12 volts. Yes, you have to turn it off first. We'll set it back to 12 volts. Interestingly enough, it wants the pro mode password anytime you change the output voltage. And that's probably a good thing because you could do some damage if you had uh, 12 volt devices and gave them 24 volts. It has a system switch recovery where it will automatically power back on. Does that require anything? No, it does not. It just does it. Also, uh, the D1 will see more than one battery. Uh, I had this in my house connected uh, to four batteries and they all showed up in the menu. Uh, two B300s and two B300Ks. Uh, I'm told, I don't have a way to test this, but I'm told it will see up to six batteries, the same, same configuration as the Apex. Uh, it also has on here an input. It doesn't do anything. I don't know what it's for, but there is an input that you can select. So let's try to do some load testing. So I have down here, we will first test, let me turn on the output. Oh, by the way, uh, before that, it does have, uh, you know, so this clip is on here and you can mount it onto uh, the side of Apex. Uh, you, it'll go on either handle. You can also kind of mount it the other direction if you like. But I took the screws out. This handle comes off and then you have um, uh, screw, uh, uh, screw head eyes, uh, hanging hooks. So you could hang it uh, this way. You could hang it this way. Uh, there's also this piece of metal here that I found out. You can run a strap through. So you could, uh, you know, attach it to something that way. So it is, uh, it is designed for multiple uses. So that, um, right, so let's get that out of the way here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have down here a 12 volt heater and this is my uh, it's just a piece of junk Harbor Freight 12 volt heater but it it draws more than 10 amps it draws uh, 12 14 15 amps and this is what I use to test uh, some 12 volt outputs to make sure that they are going to do what they say they do so we're gonna connect that up to one of the 12 volts here and let's pull it up in the app output and let's see if this thing will supply the 10 amps that it says it will so i just turned the heater on 129 136 138 amps yeah so that's that's more than 10 amps and let's see how far it goes and if hub protects itself or it just supplies 12 13 amps continuously 170 watts and we shut down. The uh, output light is blinking, indicating, I believe, an error. Let me go out. And I have a little warning up here at the top in the app. Alarm, DC output over current. So the hub protected itself. It shut down the output. Let me cycle the output off remove my overload put that aside and let's try something else now i have uh this will be kind of unique here i have a whole bunch of power banks so we're going to plug these in and see what we get for output Oh, other way around. 
So this guy can go into the Type A. This is a 60 watt charging power bank. And this big guy will take 100 watts. So let's plug all three of those in and see what they do. So scrolling down here in the app, we show 95 watts on uh, C, type C number one. Uh, yep, that's, that's this guy. Type C2, we see 61 watts. That's the littler one. And then the uh, type A, 11 watts here. So simultaneous metering. That's, uh, I like it. I like it a whole lot. Now let's add something else. Well, this might be a challenge for sure. So I have, I have the biggest DC load that uh, I have in my house. This is my charger one. So let's connect charger one to the Anderson. And I have on the end of, on the output side of charger one, a uh, XT60, which we will put on the solar input of Apex. And we can watch the Anderson output. We can watch all the outputs. I just heard a click. Wow, okay, 612 output. Six, uh, 597, 542, um, dang. And uh, I also noticed that it shut down the type C's. I have a warning message up here in the hub uh, on the app. So let's see what that says. DC output overload. So again, it protected itself. It prioritized the Anderson connector, the high output uh, high current output, and it shut down the Type C's. Neat behavior. Let me just unplug the Type C's and the Type A. So we are now only running on the Anderson connector. And if I tap on it, look, it, shows, it brings me the detail screen. So we are pulling out of that Anderson connector 669 watts, 670 watts. This is rated for uh, 700 watts total. And let's see how close we are to that 50 amps. I've got my clamp meter here. I will zero it. It is on the 60 amp scale. Let's put that on the, can we see 51 amps, 51.9 amps. Wow, it's, it's rated for 50 and yeah, 52 amps. I don't know if I've got the wire exactly square in there to get the best reading. 50, 47, 46. It may be throttling right now to protect itself. 682 watts, 689. This is impressive. So let me go to uh, the Charger 1 and see what that displays. Are we holding voltage? Yep, 12.3 volts input uh, from, from the D1 to the, to the charger one to the Apex. And Apex is showing uh, 577 watts, 568 watts on its input, which is uh, the maximum output of charger one. So this is, these are all pretty well matched together. So we're we're pulling out of the B300 into D, uh, hub D1, into charger one, and then into apex. So let's uh, shut down hub D1 and switch it to 24 volts and observe what that does. And just, can you hear the fan? So that, that high low definitely gets the fan going. Let me go into advanced settings and we will set it to 24 volts. Let 
and we will turn it back on remotely. The light is now on in blue. Can I prop that up? Charger one has not yet initialized. I just heard a click. There we go. I heard the fan change pitch. 532 watts output, 513, it's showing it down here on the Anderson as well as up there on the out, out main output. Let's go see what Charger 1 thinks of the situation. Charger 1 is showing 26.5 volts input, uh, 518 watts. It's doing its thing. Yeah, so there we go. Look at that. Hub D1. Now let's check amps again. Because we are now at a different voltage. We should see about 25. 22.4. Uh, yeah, that's about right. So 22 amps at uh, 24 volts. It's more like 27. Yeah. 26.9 volts, 600 watts, hub D1. This is going to make some people very, very happy. Thanks for watching.